Hi everyone, my name is Mikhailo Oleksienko. I am Grandmaster from Ukraine. My current ELO is 2620. And the upcoming, the name of the upcoming webinar is Rook and Games with only one pawn left. Things you must know that strong Grandmasters sometimes forget. So since I'm limited in time in this short video, I'm going to just show you a piece of a game between Jose Raul Capablanca and Vera Menchik. As some of you may know, in the game was played in 1928. Uh, back then Capablanca wasn't already a world champion, but still, obviously, one of the strongest of his time. And Vera Menchik was currently women world champion of the world. And I would show you how many mistakes and uh, inaccuracies they have made just because um, I believe they knew the material but I believe that one should should work on it to be automatically rather than come up with a solution during the game so what I would try to teach you during the webinar is to have some automatic knowledge that if for example somebody wakes you up at 3 a.m. and puts you some rook and game with one pawn position and asks you what's your move you should know the answer rather than come up with it during the game because usually um, it's like four hours of play behind you, you're tired, you have one minute on your clock it's better to know rather than to, to look for it so we're starting at this point, this is move number 52 Capablanca plays white, Vera Menchik is black, white just played f5 so this is the first key moment where black could have had a rather easy draw. Uh, Vera played rook b8, which is technically not a mistake, but much stronger was to play rook f4. This is second well-known um, drawish mechanism against one pawn after Philidor uh, defense, a Philidor position, which is rather simple. This is the second one. Rook behind the pawn and king on the short side you will uh, know much better this method after you attend my webinar will not focus on that but this was the first like sign of something going wrong for black rook f4 was much easier way to achieve a draw but rook b8 still is not a mistake king f7 king is approaching check rook e7 rook b6 still not a mistake <coughs> and now f6 was played this is another key moment of the game. So Black didn't manage to set up the Philidor position mm, due to a number of reasons. Very often you don't get a chance to do it. They also did not grab a chance to to put the rook behind the pawn, the passed pawn, while King being on the short side, which is second easy, easiest way to achieve a draw against one pass pawn which you need to make automatic because I have a lot of other examples of 2700 ELO Grandmasters failing to achieve a rather easy draw if you know what you're doing and you've developed this skill to be automatic rather than coming trying to come up with it during the game. So this is the third drawish mechanism against a passed pawn and uh, it consists of again king being on the short side. If you if you don't know what that you should attend my webinar definitely. Black's king is on the short side and the rook should be on a rank. That's also one of the simplest ways to achieve a draw in this position. Put a rook on 8th rank and now Vera makes a huge mistake which should have cost her the game on the spot. She kept her rook on A on the 6th rank which is basically only few moves are losing in this position for black. Believe it or not, rook b8 gives a draw. Rook b1 gives a draw any move with the rook down the b-file makes a draw and even king h6 makes a draw the point is you shouldn't keep your rook on 6th rank and keep your king on an x-ray with the rook from, from e7 so either move the king or move the rook you cannot leave it like that 
let me show you why rook, let, let's see what happens next and then you'll realize what is the difference rook a6, big mistake now white is winning rook d7, another big mistake now played by Husera Ulykapodlanka, one of the strongest players of that time, if not of the whole time rook d7, this is a waiting move which is frankly useless in this position which loses a win Rook king f8 would win the game on the spot. King f8 comes with the check, and that's a huge difference. If black's king was now on h6, king f8 wouldn't be possible, because black could capture the, the pawn on f6. So, king f8, king g6 is the most natural response, and now f7. And the problem is that if the rook was not on 6th rank, Black would have played king f6. Now in this position, the only move that is winning is king g8. And the problem is, the rook is on 6th rank, and rook cannot jump uh, over the head of the king and give check on g6. Any other place of a rook on a5, on a4, on a3, a2, or a1, would lead to a check down the b-file, forces the king to go back to f8, while black goes back again to the a-file. And now, because why is winning? Rook a8 doesn't help, rook e8, rook e7, rook e6, intermediate check, cutting of the king, white is winning. This is what Jose Raul should have done. He played rook d7, and now again, huge mistake by Vera Menchik. Oh no, I apologize. Rook a8, very good move, just preventing king f8. You should not let the king come to 8th rank, if you have a possibility. Though rook, rook uh, some other place would also lead to a draw, but rook a8 the most precise way. And now he repeats the position. My guess is they were both in big time trouble. As you all know, there was no time increment back then. But that's a problem, you know. My guess is they didn't work this knowledge to be uh, automatic, that you don't need time to figure out the draw or the win, you just should know it. Like you know how to win with the queen against the king, right? You just do it automatically, you don't think on every move, you just checkmate with the hand. That is what I want to develop in you if you attend my webinar. You need to know these things, autom you should know the answer right away and and just, just check it for one, two seconds. That, that is our aim. So he repeats the position, and believe it or not, she played rook a6, which is like only a few moves are losing in this position. So rook a1 leads to a draw. Rook a2 leads to a draw. Any move rook down the file, even rook a5 leads to a draw. Rook b8 leads to a draw. Rook c8 is losing, but it's frankly a very illogical move. You should you should keep your rook as far as uh, as possible from from your opponent's king to have enough distance for checks. So, and for example, after why rook e8 is losing? Rook e8, rook c8, rook e8. Now you have to give checks. King e6. You have to give checks. King e7. F7 is a huge threat. You have to give checks. And now suddenly king d6 comes with a tempo, and that's a huge problem, because if you move your rook down the 7th rank, you get into rook e7 check. If you move your rook down the c-file, f7 is promoting. If your rook was one square away from the king, you would just play king g6 and lead to an immediate draw. And um, um, that's why rook c8 is losing. On the other hand, rook b8 is rather easy draw. Rook e8... Rook d7, king e6, you just keep on checking, and that's it. And if king d6 is played, you just played king g6, and the rook is not hanging, this is a clear draw, you're even gonna win this pawn, or give a perpetual. But Veremenchik does not do it, she places the rook on the only horrible square available, rook a6, and now finally king f8, king g6, f7, Rook a8, now pay attention that if king f6, now king g8 is winning, because uh, there is no check on the g-file. The king is in the way, the pawn promotes. So in the game, it was played rook a8, rook e7, rook a7, rook e6, perfect check, king h7, and now another horrible mistake by Sarul Capablanca. 
he plays king e8, which is a huge mistake. There are many moves that are winning. The, the easiest way is just to go rook f6, put the rook behind the pawn, and then king just runs away towards the rook if it's being checked, and nothing can stop the f-pawn from promoting. The only thing black could do is to put the rook on e1, but even that wouldn't be helpful. That's it, just rook f6 wins on the spot, it's time to stop the clock. And ex-world champion is playing king e8, which loses again the winning position. Rook a8, king e7, and now if Vera would have played king g7, that's just a draw. That's just a draw. Uh, we can even... Sorry, I apologize for that. Next move is rook a7 and just winning the pawn. For example, if rook e1, rook a7... The only trick is that if black plays white plays king e8, you should not take on f7 because you would lose this rook. If king goes to e8, you just keep on checking. And that's a draw. And if king goes here, you can keep on checking or you can even take here and rook g1 can be met with king f8. That's it. If she would have played king g7, the game would be an, uh, ended in a draw. Uh, but she played rook a7, and after king f6, the f-pawn gets promoted. We can take a look how many mistakes, I would call it a blunder. So first, I would say rook b8 is inaccurate. Rook f4, you will learn how to make a rather easy draw after move rook behind the pawn. So how many mistakes world champions are making in this position? Rook a6, 1. Rook d7, 2. Rook a6, 3. King e8, 4. And rook a7, 5. Five huge mistakes that are changing the evaluation back and forth. I'm not trying to undermine their level of play. No, 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 that was not my point. My point was that normally these sort of positions appear on the board after move something like 50. You and your opponent are tired, you're lacking time, you have spent four or five hours just sitting there thinking you're exhausted, and if you don't know it by heart, like like seven times eight, you know, you're not multiplying it every time, right? You just know it's 56. So I, what I really want you to learn from my upcoming webinar is to know it by heart. So that even if you're in time trouble, if you're tired, you will make a draw without even relying on, uh, on your own head, uh, trying to figure out the draw or the win. You just know what to do and maybe briefly check the answer. You shouldn't look for the answer during the game. You should know it and just make sure you didn't mix anything up. Anyway, I hope you enjoy enjoyed this short video. Please don't think less of these world champions. There were no tie increments, there were tired, and there were no Mark Dvoretsky's endgame manual back then. So, um, I hope